Thank you for inviting me to present our research work in this webinar. I would like to acknowledge all my co-authors and contributors on this paper. Tears of the rotator cuff are among the most common pathologies of the shoulder. The prevalence of symptomatic tears in the general population older than 50 years was given with 7%. In the United States, 4 million consultations related to rotator cuff problems are performed per year, but only in about 200,000 cases a tendon repair is performed. This shows that there is a selection process where some tears are selected for tendon repair and others not. But what are our selection criteria? Appropriate treatment selection for rotator cuff tears is a matter of debate. For acute tears after significant, significant trauma, there is good agreement that treatment should be by tear repair but there is less consensus concerning treatment selection for degenerative small and medium-sized tears after a minor trauma, especially in the elderly. For these tears, treatment selection often is between physiotherapy or tendon repair. Cohort studies have shown efficacy for both methods, but comparison studies are lacking and it is unclear if one method is superior to the other. Both treatments have drawbacks. Tendon repair involves the risk of surgery-related complications and the need for postoperative restrictions with an important impact on daily activities. Physiotherapy, on the other side, leaves the tear unrepaired, which may lead to anatomical and clinical deterioration over time, and some tears may even progress from a repairable to an unrepairable state. In spite of a lack of documentation for the superiority of surgical treatment, an important increase of tendon repairs has been reported during the last years. This slide shows the increasing incidence rate of rotator cuff repairs in Finland from 40 to 130 repairs per 100,000 person years between 1998 and 2011. From Sweden, an eightfold increase of rotator cuff repairs has been reported between 2005 and 2014. Physiotherapy, on the other side, seems to be used less, at least in the USA, where the proportion of patients receiving physical therapy for a rotator cuff tear has declined since 2005 and was only 13% in 2012. The lack of scientific basis for this development was the basis for the planning and conduction of this randomized comparison study between tendon repair and physiotherapy. We wanted to find out whether primary tendon repair or physiotherapy together with secondary repair if needed is the better treatment for small and medium-sized rotator cuff tears. Um, as you know, the indications for rotator cuff repair are not well established. And that's part of the reason we're having this webinar today. Uh, this is reflected in the wide geographic variation we see in rotator cuff repair rates in the United States. In Mississippi, 9 out of 100,000 Medicare patients have rotator cuff repairs, whereas in North Dakota, it's almost tenfold higher. We don't really understand why that is, but it's a reflection that the indications are not well defined. Uh, orthopedic surgeons don't agree on who needs surgery. This study by Warren Dunn et al sent uh, four hypothetical cases to, pay, to surgeons around the country, uh, and they, they found significant variation in the surgeon's approach to those patients and significant variation in what the surgeons expected would happen with surgery. We can look at the literature to see what the indications for rotator cuff might be, and in this paper, it was a, it was a systematic review looking at what the authors described as their rationale for performing surgery on their patients. And in this systematic review, they found that most of the authors did not describe their indications for surgery, but in those that did, limitations of activities of daily living, failure of non-operative treatment, duration of non-operative treatment, and night pain were used as indications. Another way to try to determine what the indications might be would be to look at what predicts good results after <coughs> surgery. This is a systematic review that looked exactly at that question, and they found that age and gender really shouldn't impact your decision about surgery. Acute tears may benefit from early surgery, and that weakness or functional disability generally have better outcomes 
uh, with uh, surgery and worse outcomes with non-operative treatment. But the problem is uh, uh, most of our patients present with pain. There is some literature, it's not very strong, that would suggest that acute tear should be repaired and that weakness or functional loss is probably an indication for rotator cuff repair. But what about the patient that shows up in the office with an atraumatic tear with pain? And that's the patient that we wanted to study uh, in this prospective cohort. Uh, the purpose of our study was to use an evidence-based medicine physical therapy protocol on patients with atraumatic, symptomatic, full thickness rotator cuff tears. And we wanted to identify the features that predicted failure of non-operative treatment, and we thought those might assist us in determining what the indications for surgery might be. Uh, our methods, this was a prospective multicenter cohort study. We included patients from eight, age 18 to 100. They all had documented full thickness rotator cuff tears, and they were all atraumatic, symptomatic rotator cuff tears. We excluded patients with arthritis, cervical issues, adhesive capsulitis, and contralateral shoulder issues.